Welcome to the Acupuncture Outsider Podcast. My name is Richard Hazel, and in the time it takes for you to commute to or from work, I hope to have shared something of interest about orthopedic acupuncture using motor points, trigger points, myofascial slings, uh, neurofunctional acupuncture, segmental treatments, anything that crosses my mind that seems to be of interest. I hope you'll enjoy it. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Acupuncture Outsider. This is Richard Hazel, and today I want to update you on a migraine patient that I've been seeing. I'll talk about a couple migraine patients, but um, I've done other episodes about my treating migraines, and I think I want to discuss some things that I've been able to figure out recently that have been able to simplify my treatment and I'm still getting great results. Um, the patient I want to tell you about, she came to me in at the end of June. And uh, so I've been seeing her for about six months. Um, actually, a little bit less because she canceled her last two appointments. Um, and I'm going to talk about that. But um, Basically, I, I started seeing her the very last of June, beginning of July, and I was seeing her once a week for a few months. Um, she had gone through all sorts of neurological testing because she had daily migraines, and they were really debilitating, and so she was at the neurological center here in Buffalo and seeing neurologists and getting brain scans and they were look they thought maybe she had like a cerebral spinal fluid um leak um there were all sorts of uh things they were trying to rule out because of how bad her daily headaches were and the symptoms she was having and a lot of pain behind the eye and um pain in the bridge of the nose and uh eyebrow and um Anyway, so like light sensitivity, the 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 typical stuff that you see for bad migraines. Um, her migraines were so bad that the neurologist told her to just take her triptans every day. If you work with migraine patients, you know that there's a limit to how many um, triptan um, doses you can have in a certain amount of time. They're usually prescribed so that you can't take, I think, more than two per week. I think it's dosed out about eight per month or something like that. So um, so when you have daily migraines, it's really kind of rough. Um, if you're taking the triptans too often, though, then you get what's called a rebound headache. So then you basically get a headache from your migraine medication. Um, so anyway, she was on she's on daily triptans uh, because the the neurologist said you already have headaches every day. So if the triptans are are helping to relieve the headaches, then just take them every day. So um, she was doing that, going through all sorts of testing. They were really trying to figure out why she was having daily migraines for the past two years. Uh, when she had not been having daily migraines before that, she was she was getting migraines, but they really got bad uh, a couple years ago. Um, there were some theories tossed around about COVID vaccine, et cetera, but I don't want to get into anything controversial here. Not that I avoid controversy, but I just don't want to get off topic. Um, so she um, she had been trying traditional acupuncture for about a year when I started seeing her. Um, she told me that acupuncturists would do some cupping and do some um, trigger points and um, uh, other uh, traditional acupuncture points. And she said she felt like um, she had been going twice a week and she felt like it did help um, decrease the frequency of her headaches. But I think she was still having about five, per week. Um, 
when I started seeing her. I started seeing her because I had seen her son as a patient for something else. And he had asked me if, if I treated migraines and I told him, yes, I, I have very good success with it. So she decided to come see me and, um, right off the bat, she said, this is definitely different because you knew exactly where my pain is that when I, that I get when I have a migraine, um, I was palpating the suboccipital muscles to get feedback from her and on her migraine side, they were way more sensitized than on the other side. Um, and so, uh, you know, from other episodes that I typically treat, uh, sensitized suboccipital muscles as well. And actually I treat bilaterally for that regardless. And then, um, trigger points in the upper trapezius sometimes, uh, release the SCM, but, uh, so for this patient, I was seeing her once a week and to like, to tell you, um, how it progressed, it really wasn't huge improvement in the first few weeks. I think she would go three days without a migraine, which she's, and she said, she said, I'm, I'm telling you this because I want you to know that I'm happy to be going three days in a row without migraines, not to say I'm still getting four migraines a week, a week. She said, I, you know, this is really, as I see it, this is progress. I'm very happy. And I said, okay, I'm glad you're happy. I'm not happy yet. <laughs> I feel like I want to be able to do better than this. So, um, with the help of suboccipital nerve blocks, um, which treated her occipital neuralgia, I think the complicating factor for her was that she was a migrainer with suboccipital neuralgia. So you can imagine you layer that uh, suboccipital that uh, occipital neuralgia, the uh, um, occipital neuralgia with migraines and um, you've got a really bad situation. And I could not seem to get out ahead of the occipital neuralgia enough to impact the headaches more the, the way I would expect to on most migraine patients. So she went for occipital nerve blocks and then we started seeing huge progress on the migraines. Um, so the occipital neuralgia, I think was the complicating factor. And once that was resolved, it stayed resolved. It's good now. Um, and now my treatment of her suboccipitals, uh, so I want to tell you what I treat. I treat the, um, obliquus capitis inferior on both sides. I treat the rectus capitis posterior major and, and the semispinalis capitis right below the occiput um you get both muscles at the same time because you got to go through the trapezius aponeurosis into the semispinalis capitis into the rectus capitis posterior major um, with one needle and so it's not super deep but you do have to feel the different layers to know that you've got to the sub suboccipital because the suboccipital is going to be the densest of the three um, tissues that you're going through so you'll get into those and then I do the semispinalis capitis around the 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 crease in the neck around like C5 6 like right below C5 right above C6 um, because in my experience that's another area where the occipital the uh, occipital nerves um, can get irritated especially if there are trigger points there so so it's only um, six needles. It's bilateral, OCI, uh, RCPM, and semispinalis capitis at like C5-6. One hertz on the electric stem turned just enough that I see slight pulsing of the muscles. I want it really gentle. And I do that for 10 minutes. Then we take the needles out and then I do trigger points 
in the upper trapezius and it's usually those those anterior border of the upper trapezius coming right off the neck so anything that she has there i clear and then there's another trigger point in the top of the tra upper tra upper trap that i sometimes have to get on her and i do that from a, in a lateral sort of transverse angle so that it's not going anywhere near lung space i'm grasping the upper trap pulling it up and we're going from medial to lateral like lat you know um, angling toward like the acromion of the of the scapula so i'm really going really transversely and safely to get those trigger points so um <clears throat> that's been my treatment for this patient and she has had in, uh, incredible progress and in the past like right before i went away to teach in italy at the end of november um, she had been going 10 days without headaches. Um, and then she'd have one and she said, and if I take my medication, then it really goes away and I'm good. So she knew she was getting a headache and she would take the medication and she wouldn't have a headache. So it did what it's supposed to do. Finally, it was like an abortive. And so really, yes, it was a headache, but no, she didn't suffer the, 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 the whole um, experience of the headache and could have a day. Um, so she's really happy with that. Now, I went away to Italy and I was there for two weeks. So I was there last week of November, first week of December. Uh, today it's the 16th of December. So while I was away, I saw on my phone a cancellation for her appointment that she had the week that I was supposed to be back, which was this past week. Um, and, you know, I didn't think much of it because she sometimes has to reschedule. So anyway, um, I her son wanted to come in for a treatment and I was talking to him on the phone and he said, oh, my mom wants you to know that she canceled her appointment for this week because she hasn't had any headaches this month. She's She's been doing great. And I said, oh, that's awesome. I'm so glad she's doing really well. And then he said, "She, um, her neurologist wants to, to know if he can contact you. He'd like to talk to you <laughs> because they'd been struggling for years, for two more than two years uh, with her daily migraines. So I'm psyched to be talking to her neurologist about what I do for migraines because I get really reproducible good results for many, many, many migraine patients. Um, daily migrainers go down to once a week or once a month. Um, I have one patient I already mentioned in another episode. I, I actually haven't seen her for her monthly um maintenance this month but i saw her the, for the first time a few months ago and she hasn't had a headache since um and she was almost daily um she couldn't smell perfume or cologne she couldn't wear perfume or cologne because it would give her a migraine she couldn't yell at her kids without getting a migraine and she, we were joking i was we were laughing she's like i can even scream at my kids and i don't <laughs> and i don't get a migraine and um and then I have another patient that I just saw this week who has now gone, I think, three months without a migraine. And he had to keep his medication in 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 the car, on him, at home, at work. He needed to have his pill like ready to go if he was going to get a migraine because he landed in the emergency room a couple times. It was so bad. They had to put him on an IV I don't remember it was in medica there was medication and, and magnesium he said and d different things but it would it would knock him out it was so bad like he was like almost unconscious from these migraines so and he says and I I have to say I still get the nausea I still get some of the physical symptoms that would tell me I was going to have a migraine and then I don't get the migraine and he said he has like I don't know how many, I think he said he has like 24 pills or 26 pills. They're just like stockpiled now because he doesn't need them. He hasn't used them in, I think he said three 
month, this three months, he did have to take a Tylenol recently for like a tension headache or something, but it wasn't his migraine. He didn't get the migraine symptoms, so he just took a Tylenol. He was fine. But he said he still sometimes gets the nausea and other symptoms that were going to lead. Oh, he got this. He gets this like neck tension that he knows is going to trigger a migraine. And then it didn't trigger a migraine. Um, So we're working now on postural muscles. Um, We talked about that because I was saying, you know, that's probably the origin is like the muscular tension that would lead. Because he's a a gym teacher and a coach. And he does a lot of physical stuff. Um, So uh, that would, you know, that could trigger migraines for him. So we talked about that. We're now we're working on postural things to really improve his, the the outcome, like keep the traps and levator from getting tight from exercise. So we're working with other scapular stabilizers, et cetera, and, you know, lats and things that, that could uh, affect the scapular dynamics that could lead to upper traps and levator getting tight. But basically I'm doing the same protocol on him as that other patient. I'm doing rectus cavitus posterior major, um, uh, the uh, obliquus capitis inferior, semispinalis capitis. And then on him, I'm doing trapezius. I I think the last time I saw him, I did do upper, middle, and lower traps because he's at, he's physically active. My other patient that I mentioned is not an athlete. She's about 70 or 68 or something like that. Um, so I don't worry about her lower traps being a part of the problem. And clearly they have not been uh, but for him, I want to make sure that the the trapezius is not um, getting tight from exercise. So we're working a little bit more from like an athlete perspective as opposed to um, just typical migraine patient. But he's had great success too. I have other patients that were daily migrainers that are down to once a week. I have some that are once a month. Um, one of my once a month maintenance patients that I've been seeing once a month for for the past year or a little bit more. Yeah, more than that. Um, she's She just comes in for her once a month maintenance just to stay on top of stuff. But um, she had one, one migraine this month and that's pretty typical for her. She'll say pretty much when I see her, we, we review her month and she usually tells me she's had one headache and um so she had one migraine this month and her abortive medication was able to stop it from happening so it counts as a headache but we we're happy that the abortive abortive medication actually did keep it from actually tipping into being debilitating or even a nuisance for her so she's doing really, really well too, but I have really good success with this protocol. I hope somebody out there uh, also treats migraines and can can try this and reproduce what I see and happening with these patients. And I really think do not sleep on trigger points in the upper traps. That I really feel like is one of those um, uh, secondary issues that can make it really hard to get good results by just treating the suboccipital muscles like the OCI and the rectus capitis posterior major. I really think, um, and, and by the way, I don't even treat the obliquus capitis superior anymore. I don't even think about it anymore. Um, and I don't worry about rectus capitis posterior minor. I think it's really so deep and not a primary entrapment source for occipital nerves. Whereas the rectus capitis posterior major absolutely can entrap uh, the greater occipital nerve. Um, Same with the uh, obliquus capitis inferior. If you told me I could only treat one of those, I would always treat OCI. OCI, when I see a migraine patient for the first time and and I palpate, I can always tell you the OCI is going to be the most sensitive on that patient. It is very consistent. 
And if you look at Dr. Trescott's uh, book, uh, Peripheral Nerve Entrapments, she even has a great illustration of how the forward head placement postural issue can greatly impact the OCI and how working with posture can improve your outcomes for someone who has a problem where the uh, obliquus capitis inferior is triggering migraines. So, um, you know, just something to keep in mind. But I'm very happy with the progress that I've that I've made on putting together a, a working protocol for treating migraines. And I really owe what I'm doing and the success I have to Dr. Trescott, Andrea Trescott, and her book, um, Peripheral Nerve Entrapments. It really elucidated for me the primary um, sources for uh, occipital nerve entrapment. And I really, I mean, I, I really owe her a great debt of uh, gratitude because I'm now getting such better results than when I was treating mostly just neck muscles and um, the trape upper trapezius. Those used to get me good results. I, I don't want I want to say I still got good results by treating trapezius trigger points, levator scapulae, semispinalis capitis. But once I really started treating the suboccipitals that I've mentioned, then it became like reproducible, excellent results for many, many more people. And within three to five visits, we start seeing the a lot longer space between uh, migraines. And on some people, as I've mentioned, they go away. They're, they're not having migraines. So how often can I reproduce that? I don't know, but it happens frequently enough that I'm not surprised when I see them in a month and they say that they had no headache, uh, it's, it's pretty common. So um, I hope I get to talk to this neurologist soon and present something at that, at that organization because I really think this is a great adjunct for their patients. Um, and I hope someone out there who treats migraines will um, attempt to replicate what I'm, what I'm saying that I do. Um, because I really think this could help a lot of people who have migraines that seem to be generated by these muscular entrapments of, of the occipital nerves. Okay, so that is the episode for this week. And um, I will talk to you all very soon. Have a good one.